what God says about mankind. Grief showcases the human condition. From God's hand, people were created in a noble and honorable form. Human beings were granted the privilege of being more like God than any other of God's astounding works. To exist in this form is to own a calling, dignity and capacity of the most excellent order. Mankind, being the pinnacle of God's creative work, God found most joy in Him. Yet as it is in relationships today, the greatest damage can be done by those who are closest to you. When mankind chose to rebel against God, we tumbled into a blackness from which we can no longer see, understand or appreciate the glory of God. Rather, the knowledge that God has such intimate knowledge of us has become irksome and annoying. Every part of our being has been damaged so that we not only rebel against our glorious Creator in our actions, but in our attitudes and even in our very nature. There is a principle of hostility toward God, an antagonism and a rebellion that has soaked down to the very heart of who we are. The result, to borrow an illustration my older brother Wayne used to use, is not unlike a prince dressed in all of his royal finery brawling in the mud. Sadly, the human condition is now so far removed from its original splendor that when the king comes and asks us what we are doing, we look up at him from the mud, agitated and self-assured, and shout, What? It has been helpful for me to remember that I am fallen, and that by default I will not handle pain well. This is a danger that I have had to bring to my Lord in prayer. As a child of God, I no longer desire to have the animal instinct of desire for personal happiness drag me into sin. I desire more than anything to grieve well and to live with beautiful motives, actions and attitudes that will last forever. My name, as a Christian, is closely tied to the name of God and I no longer want to bring Him disgrace or pain. It is a powerless and delusional argument that if God created you and permitted you to fall into sin with Adam, then you have no excuse but to sin. Yes, God did permit sin's entrance. Yet God cannot be blamed for that. People chose to deliberately sin and you and I still choose to deliberately sin every day. Those who sin bear the blame for sin. Sadly, the wages of sin has always been death. Even a person who has been saved by God will still die as a result of sin, death of the body. Death is a dreadful reminder of how shocking sin really is. Like sin, death brings agony that escapes description, something like the agony in the heart of God as He stares upon a corrupted human race. The illicit treasures of sin are an illusion. For a few deluded years, we may enjoy living outside of God's framework, drinking deep of the pleasures God has kindly built into this world, but the full stop at the end of that sentence is death, terrible death, black death, painful death, morbid death, lingering death, terrifying death, dreadful death, unsatisfying death, hateful death. There is no attractive adjective that can prefix death. It is the hellish, just punishment for this magnitude of rebellion against God. When glaring at death, there is no comfort like the comfort of knowing with unquestioned finality that death is not the final word for a child of God. Yes, the body has died as a consequence of sin 
and this brings unspeakable pain. Yet that soul lives on, free from the damning corruption of sin in every form forever. They are now free to live up to the royal dignity for which they were originally formed in the hand of God. This is the only worthwhile goal for the human life. Make up your mind as you grieve to refuse to grovel under your cravings for restored personal happiness and freedom from pain at any cost. Rather, use this opportunity to see the ugliness of the end of that road and set your heart on the glory of eternal restoration. To lack a proper understanding of sin renders you powerless to deal adequately with the concept of death.